Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a blue spiral. Start by smoothing out all of the wrinkles, and then decide where you want the center of your spiral to be, and just give it a little pinch. And I'm going to be using the microwave splatter guard. So it's really important that you put the top of the splatter guard down flat against the shirt, because that's what's going to create the pleats. And for this one, I'm using a modified fork because I know some of you don't have hemostats. So this is just a inexpensive fork from the dollar store. And I've had two of the tines bent backwards by bow. And you know, it works just kind of like a hemostat. The thing of it is though, you wanna make sure that you don't press really hard into the shirt because you could poke a hole through it. And you just give it like a couple twists and then with your opposite hand, create the spiral. So really pay attention to how I'm doing it. I'm just using the fork to hold the center of the spiral in place. And then, like I said, with my opposite hand, I'm making the pleats and I'm wrapping it around. And you wanna go as far as you can until you know that you just can't go any further. And then you want to gently wiggle the fork out while you hold down the center of the spiral. Otherwise, you run the risk of pulling the whole spiral out with you and you're gonna have to do it again. And I really don't like doing things twice. I like to secure my spirals by using my favorite rubber bands. And what you do is you just open them up wide, slide them along the table and up underneath the spiral and then gently release them. And then I like to create a nice tight spiral. So I'm going to pull on all of the loose tails and tuck them into the nearest rubber band. And I will go around and around pulling on those loose tails until I pull on them and they don't move anymore. That spiral looks pretty good, it's nice and tight. Next you wanna build yourself some type of an ice barrier. And these are silicone cake molds that I get from Amazon. And I have a link for them down below, along with everything else that I use for tie dye, so go ahead and check that out. And then here are my bag of swatches. And this is how I decide what colors I'm going to use. I set them out and I line them up and I decide what I think is going to look good together.
Once I have my colors picked out and all of my dye collected, I like to mark out my pattern using a washable marker. Now it's time for the fun part, we get to add the dye. I want this shirt to have full saturation, so I am adding the dye just a little bit heavy handed. So I get asked quite a bit, how much dye am I supposed to use? You know, when do you know when enough is enough? And that really is just something that you're going to have to practice at in trial and error um, until you're able to find your own method. You know, something to keep in mind that you, you can always add more dye after the ice melts, but you can't take it away. So for instance, if you are always having a lot of undissolved dye after your round of ice, you're probably adding too much. You know, that's kind of a good indicator. And if you have a whole bunch of undissolved dye and maybe you don't have full saturation on the back, go ahead and just give it a quick little sprinkle of soda ash and add another layer of ice. I forgot to mention, this shirt is on a very slight incline. So that empty dye jar that's underneath the rack that's propping it up, what is that, about maybe three inches? So when I say slight, I mean it's very slight. I just messed up on my dye pattern. Did you guys catch that? I didn't even realize it until right now as I'm editing the tutorial. So that's the one good thing about ice dyeing and spirals in general, they're pretty forgiving. And you'll see at the end in the reveal, it's really not that noticeable. I haven't mentioned this in a while and if you're new to my channel, you may not have heard this. So these are disposable plastic picnic spoons, but I don't dispose of them. I take them to the sink when I'm done and I rinse them off really well and then I put them in the dishwasher and when they're completely dry, I stick them back in the box. Also, I use a different spoon in each jar of dye. I try really hard not to cross contaminate my colors. Next, give your project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure and then add your ice. Since it's still winter and rather cool, I like to batch my projects for 48 hours after the ice melts. Ooh, look at how pretty that is. So I did end up batching this shirt for the 48 hours and I had it wrapped in an electric blanket. And I do have a tutorial on that if you're curious about what I'm talking about. All right, so now it's time for the rinse out. And you wanna start by using cold water. That's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric and then increase your water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I do however many hot water cycles it takes using Kirillon. And usually in the second hot water cycle, I will scoop it up and look at the water. And if it's you know basically clear, I know that I'm ready for my final hot water cycle using Millsoft. And Millsoft is a professional 
fabric softener and it does make things feel really nice. Um, and then I put it in the dryer and then I'll iron it and photograph it and all that and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well here it is guys. Here's our blue spiral ice dye after it's been washed and dried and I think it turned out really pretty. Having it on that slight incline made those nice little pretty wisps in there. I really like that. And I love this color palette. It's hard to go wrong with blues. Um, and you probably wouldn't have even noticed that I messed up on my dye placement had I not said anything about it. So overall, I'm super duper pleased and very happy with this shirt. So what do you guys think? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.